Hey, this is Michael Wild from Splunk. I'm going to give you a quick demo today. If you're a Twitter developer or interact with Twitter's data at all in any way, a little bit about indexing it in Splunk, but also how to be compliant with Twitter's uh, compliance um, requests. So I have a tweet here, testing delete from the Twitter compliance stream. So if I just look over here in Splunk, I just did a search really quick, and there's my tweet. Okay, I'm indexing it from a stream provided by Gnip, um, who... Um, provide social data. And uh, there's my tweet. Obviously, I have a lot more tweets in here than just mine, but we located the one that I wanted. Now, if we pop over here, we're going to go ahead and delete this tweet. Okay, so what Twitter is actually going to do, it's going to send uh, a message uh, about this particular tweet to the downstream consumers, in this case, Gnip, then to me. And me as a consumer of Twitter's data, I'm supposed to delete it. Those are the... Um, the request that Twitter makes to let you know that, hey, your user has deleted uh, some data, so therefore you should. So if we, we go back to our tweet right here, the tweet's still here inside of Splunk, but we need to delete it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to do one of them, but I could do hundreds or millions. And if we look at this particular ID, I'll go find this particular tweet deletion record in the compliance stream. So if we just go over here, and uh, I'm going to hit enter. And we see here, um, index equals compliance, where I'm putting all my compliance tweets. And this is just a message sent by Twitter, basically saying this particular tweet ID done by this particular user, which is probably me, 705673. That's probably my user ID in there, right? Yeah, 705673, that's me. And... Uh, a delete has occurred in Twitter system, therefore I should delete it myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple things in Splunk. One of them is called a subsearch, because what we really need to do is harvest information out of this particular compliance index, and then we need to uh, take that information, like the IDs of the tweets we should delete, and then find those tweets over here in the main index, and then delete them. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run what's called a subsearch, or I'm going to build it right here. So a subsearch works like this search and for a sub search you put brackets around it because we're actually not going to use this search in this particular window uh, because these are this is JSON data uh, and by the way um, this field here notice it's delete.status.id that's the field name but over here inside of the actual um, tweet it's just ID so I've got two differing differing field names so I'm going to say s path path equals delete.status.id, and I'm gonna kind of rename it, so I'm just gonna say output equals ID. Okay, so it's gonna take that field, transmogrify it into a new field called ID. And since I don't need a whole list of all this information, what I really need is just this one field, ID equals, um, I'm just gonna say fields ID. Okay, so I've put a bracket around here. Now we're not gonna hit enter right here because this is just gonna be a part of the search we're gonna use in a minute. So now if we go back here, again, for the purposes of, of this, I'm just gonna search on Michael Wild uh, because I, it's just gonna limit my results. But hey, you know, heck, let's just do source type equals Twitter. Okay, and we're gonna look over, I don't know, we could look over the last 60 minutes because that's when I know when it happened. I'll just cancel this. Now, if I go here and run my sub search right here and I hit that, okay? So the first thing I do before I delete it, I'm gonna actually prove that I can find this. Harvesting information from another index to drive a search to find something in this one. Okay, so boom. Now, as a result of some information coming out of the compliance index, I've targeted this particular event and in Splunk, provided I have the access to do this, I can click delete. And Splunk is basically going to go remove that entry from the index. And we can see there was no errors. One event was deleted. Now let's go and sort of prove this. Let's look for my particular tweet ID right here in, uh, in the main index. Source type equals Twitter. And let's look for that particular tweet ID. And we shouldn't find it. Matter of fact, okay, let's make sure. Let's look for Michael Wild. And... Um, yeah, I haven't tweeted in the past 60 minutes. So there you go. That's uh, how one would do deletes as well out of Twitter. If you wanted to take this to another level, what you might do is just get rid of this right here. 
In this case, I'm looking for one particular tweet. Okay, if I do that, copy that in there. You wanna delete a whole load of them? Just do this. Boom, pipe that to delete. And of course, since the sub search is running, if you wanna go and kinda of see how it's working, I hit jobs. And as we can see, there's a sub search in there in 15 minutes, it's found 25,000 deletes that it needs to do. And then of course now, uh, the, mat, the higher level search is going through the process of cruising through, taking those sub search results and deleting them. And then of course, for the real nerds in the room, uh, if I um, click the I, that's actually gonna give me the full search. This is pretty long. See all those little tweet IDs it's trying to delete? It ends up, see how it ends up creating one big giant or. So if it finds this tweet, or that tweet, or this tweet, or that tweet, add infinitum to the end of the big list of tweets, eventually it's gonna go ahead and pipe that to delete. At the very end, see a lot of tweets, thousands of them, thousands of them. There's a lot of activity going on Twitter. So that's how something like that would work on a micro scale with one user, one tweet, or on a macro scale with a lot of them. So, you know, the delete process will take time because you're going through every event, but then again, the most important thing is getting them deleted. That's how it works. Hopefully that helps.